D-O-T. Not as safe as you think. What violence can it really survive? They're hiding the answer under this little sticker. We too hide our uncertainty beneath the approval stamp from a lab far away. Because the only way to see the strength of the helmet for yourself is to kill it. You wanna know about the DOT standard? <laughs> well, Uncle Sam is too lazy to dredge that swamp. However monsters are in there, they're getting deeper. Bigger. 1974, the federal government under pressure to define new standards. With time running out, they make a smudgy copy of an ANSI criterion from three years prior. They call it FMVSS 218, common alias, D-O-T. But here's the thing. I see ANSI Z90.1 wasn't exactly based on motorcycle head injuries. They used existing data on automobile accidents. Unhelmeted victims. Or this. Let's take a very slowed down look at what happened to dummies like these in that frontal crash we saw a moment ago. But these test dummies are me, or you, or someone you love. Watch. DOT allows 400 Gs at impact. That's a pickup truck sitting on your head with a dwell time of 4 milliseconds above 150 Gs, 2 milliseconds above 200. On the fleshy side of a motorcycle helmet, that's far too much. Modern science tips the scale towards skull fracture at 290 G. And that's why all the other standards cap the limit around that lower level. Snell, ECE, even the ANSI criterion that DOT ripped off switched to a 300 G limit in 1979. We all know what's best for riders. One of us just doesn't seem to care. DOT knew their standard was off base from the beginning. And like I said, the document they copied in 74 was already outdated. And at first they promised to update inside of 18 months, but 76 came and went. And so did 77, 78, and 79. In 1980, DOT did return to their paperwork, but only to mandate that all helmets be tested with a medium-sized head form. We don't know why or by whom that amendment was passed, but we do know that they rectified the mistake in 1988. Some bright spark realized what a human head looked like and suggested they switch to full jawline forms in assorted sizes. For unfathomable reasons, they decided to stick with the ill-fitting half-heads in the end, but they did at least start testing small helmets with small block heads and large with large. DOT would bask in that ninny hammer success for a decade or so. Not that they could be bothered to make another update at the end of it. Instead, they commissioned the 1997 study to assess the feasibility of updating. Typical government. I don't know if the feds were surprised by the report, but if they were, they're dumber than I thought. I mean, DOT eons out of date. 400 G's not an acceptable level of shock. The federal government can afford a BB gun, so there's no reason not to test face shields. Ditto roll off, ditto chin bar strength. Dollars to donuts, you've never even heard of this explosive report. See, explosive things that don't explode get buried. Meaning DOT's weak spots have sat unresolved for 21 years now. Unprotected. Impact tests are conducted under rigidly controlled conditions. The results are dramatic proof. If this were Snell, now the face shield would have been tested for impacts, and he might have survived this. When a case gets me down, I pour a double and give my head a shake. Of course, DOT buckets aren't tested for roll-off, so I guess I'm just getting slapped around all over again. Bad helmets are a part of this big bad world, and that's okay. I just wish the lack of communication would stop it from spinning. We know the labs have a full report on every helmet, actual numbers for how much shock it transmits. Why don't we get those numbers? When I tried to pull test results for my own buckets, all of them were missing. Maybe never released to the public, maybe lost in the void between public and publisher, somewhere on the other side of an email address that nobody answers. Why? Why do we get nauseating detail on whether that cow had a fulfilling life and to which 1960s chin bar this tributes? But when it comes to the safety of our safety equipment, all we get is that. Now someone's gonna get hurt over this little sticker. 
if we had access to test results, we'd know this chin bar was too thin. If we knew of the 65 millimeter deflection, we could have gauged its safety versus the other options. And all this, if DOT bothered to test chin bars at all. Test chin bars? Eh, sucker. You don't know the half of it. The raw truth is that DOT doesn't test anything. They set the minimal standards, a few flat anvil drops, some hemispherical, a couple tugs and a couple punctures, but it's up to manufacturers to actually perform the tests and self-certify. Self-certify. I ain't the world's greatest detective, but even I can smell a rat. Or two. First is that manufacturers can cheat the test. With freedom to choose their own impact locations, they can and do make helmets that are strong in very specific test areas and weaker everywhere else. I've been testing helmets since well, long before anyone paid me to do it. Man, it's one thing to know how you'll be tested, but well, that ain't the same as how you'll be used. You gotta look at Snell. They give their technicians leeway to search out the weakest spots and test them in particular. Strength is measured at the weakest link. And a motorcycle crash will find it. Go again now. I was just pothole. Just pothole. The second problem with self-certification is that manufacturers lie. In 2006, the Office of Vehicle Safety bought 40-odd DOT helmets, hoping to verify their qualification. But of these, 13 ended up being questionable for safety, another five for labeling, and in the end, seven models had to be recalled entirely. Just from this small sampling, it appears 42,120 helmets left the factory with DOT stickers that were not, in fact, up to standard. And that doesn't include all the models that go unverified. The 2006 sampling is too small to incriminate, but going back a ways, you can find bulk compliance tests with larger and similar numbers. If the spot tests are in any way representative, it appears that around 20% of DOT helmets would actually fail the DOT safety test. This gives us enough evidence to convict. But of what? Indifference is the wrong word. The department spends loads of time and money hunting down beanie helmets, novelty helmets, and those who would wear no helmet. DOT obviously cares about motorcycle safety. They just think they have more dangerous fish to fry before making a much needed, and for some manufacturers, a very expensive fix of FMVSS 218. Bad priorities. Now that's what DOT is guilty of, and that's what this letter exposes. From an overseas Canuck like me, might as well be a message in a bottle. But if we all send one, especially Americans, we can float this issue with the DOT. Bring it to light. <laughs>